six negotiators. Uh, there's a lot of them in the pot, certainly. Rich Edson out in Washington. Thank you very much, Rich. Well, will the vote this afternoon hold American taxpayers' refunds hostage? Let's bring in Congressman John Garamendi from California. And Congressman, many Americans are at home right now, and they don't know what their tax structure is going to be like next year, in particular, small businesses. I was looking at some data from the journal, and, and even the NAHB, National Association of Home Builders, says that most of their members are paying taxes uh, under individual rates, their federal taxes. I know that you know, in California, obviously, that housing is a big problem. What are you hearing in California from your constituents about their concerns? Well, I think everybody's concerned about what's going to be the tax policy for the coming year. Yes, this afternoon, probably in a couple of hours, we will be voting, I think, on a very, very solid proposal that would keep the tax rates as they have been for the last seven, eight years for those who have an adjusted gross income of less than 250000 for a married couple. Keep in mind that also includes many, many businesses. About 97 percent of the small businesses would fall into that category of having an adjusted gross income. And in the tax bill, there's also very, very important provisions for small businesses allowing for a 100 percent write-off of all capital investment up to $150,000, and then it phases out as you approach it's $500,000. That allows for a reduction of the normal income to allow it to be reduced and a very, very important stimulus for the economy. And if you hire people, obviously that's a write-off also for a small business. So the small business issue is taken care of for nearly all of the small businesses. Now, many quote, small businesses happen to be huge businesses like Bechtel, uh, which is a small business by this definition. Uh, Congressman Jim Labenthal, uh, by this point sure. in time, we've all heard the talking points on both sides, and I'd be curious sure. to know wh what you see as the end game coming here. Not, not what you want to have happen, but what you realistically see coming out of Congress, if anything, before year end. I don't know. I don't know. What we have seen over the last two years has been a Senate that is very, very difficult to work with. And this is not necessarily just a Democratic point of view. The fact is that the Senate has blocked most everything that's gone on and only let out very, very few pieces of legislation. So the real sticking point here, the real last hurdle, is that senator who offers to filibuster. And at that point, things come to a rip-roaring stop around here. So I don't know the answer to that, but you might ask that senator who is going to threaten the filibuster what that senator wants to see happen. Well, but you know what's happening, Congressman Garamendi, and you know this better than anybody does, is that, is that whether it's a senator or a congressman or a congresswoman, what they are listening to is the folks at home and the businesses that are in their sure. districts, just like in your district in California. And what they are right. saying, if you look at like uh, the National Association of Manufacturers, 82% of their members say they are concerned about tax hikes. I mean, these are small businesses, manufacturing companies, folks that could employ yeah workers in California, they're concerned. Why not take that concern to the table, negotiate, and at least extend maybe the tax breaks for, say, two years? Well, I mean, those are possibilities. That could happen. I'm a small business. I've run a ranch, my wife and I, for more than 30 years now, and I know what it is to make a payroll, try to sell the cattle at a profit. I also know that in the bill that we're voting on this afternoon, there's something very, very important for small businesses across this nation. In fact, 90 percent, maybe as many as 97 percent will, if this bill passes, not see a tax hike. Now, the issue that was raised just a moment ago by your colleague was what's going to happen? As I said, I don't know because I've never been able to figure out the United States Senate. One senator at any moment can bring this thing to a screeching halt for reasons that may have nothing to do with taxes, may have something to do with the START Treaty. We don't know on our side. I do know that within a few hours, the United States Congress, of which I'm a member, will pass a piece of legislation that is a tax, a continuation of the tax reductions for nearly every American, including those who are billionaires, they will see a tax reduction also. I know we will do that, and I know that the bill that we pass has a very, very important elements in it for small businesses, 90 percent, 97 percent of whom will continue to have the low tax rate, and only a few 
small percentage, very large Congressman Garibandi, uh, but I, I'm confused about yeah. something you're saying here. I mean, yeah. our, our Washington reporter and all signs that we are saying that this bill is going to be dead on arrival, that this is just kind of an act of futility this afternoon, no. and that we've no, got to no, come no, back actually, to negotiations. Yeah. And actually, I don't understand the billionaire. Very, very, so please, well, please enlighten me here, sir. It's the United States Constitution. The Tea Party says follow the Constitution. The Constitution says that you have to start these kinds of bills in the House. So that's one of the critical things is to get this bill out of the House so the Senate can then work with can work on it. If there's going to be a compromise, it will be made in this bill. Well, that's why we have to okay. do this, plain and simple. But it probably won't be. Yes, but there there reason, I, wish, I wish we could see movement. I know that, that the um, American business owners are hoping there's some movement. Uh, Mark DeCarrie, my well, colleague, has a question for you as well, uh, Congressman. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering if, if there is going to be a compromise, which, which areas would you actually start to, to, what would be the talking points at this point? At this well, your colleague, Cheryl, just said one, and that is uh, the length of time. How long will it last? And then what will it be? Those two things will go together. For me, I think we have a good piece of legislation here. Many of my colleagues think it ought to be limited to two, three years, get through the uh, recession. Uh, and in fact, their argument, and I think it is correct, is that this particular piece of legislation that we're designing here this afternoon is in fact a stimulus. It will encourage investment by businesses, uh, at least nearly every small business uh, will be encouraged to invest. Uh, so I think the length of time that it remains in effect is one of the areas, whether to include, um, as, as the Republicans think they ought to include billionaires and give them what amounts to a $100,000 tax cut, while somebody earning $30,000 gets a $1,000 tax cut. Well, but, those the, kind of but, issues but, but, there, the but many economists would say to you, Congressman, that, that those are the folks that will actually reinvest in our economy. They will invest that money. They well, will hire this, workers. And again, I go back to a large majority of these. Again, I go back to the small business owner. Maybe that's well, where there can be some compromise between well, 250 and a million. On, hang on a second. The, the bill that we're operating on this afternoon is not a corporate tax bill. This is a personal income tax and many bill. Small, it and, happens that, and, they, and they file I, under I, that. Well, for their federal taxes, they file, Congressman, under the I, personal income. I know, you know. I do. You know that. I do. I, I have a small business. I know exactly what we are talking about here. But I also know that in this piece of legislation, I can reduce my taxes by 150,000, my adjusted gross income by $150,000 if I go out and buy a new trailer to haul my cattle to market. Uh, that's a very expensive trailer. But if I invest in my ranch, I can reduce my adjusted gross income and literally write off that investment. That's a major stimulus. And every other small business owner who, ha uh, in fact, large business owner has the same opportunity if they are filing as a personal income tax a payer, not as a corporation. So what you were saying earlier about the investment side of it is also part of this because the capital gains uh, is also reduced for everyone up to a 200 or $250,000 adjusted gross income for a married couple. So you have the capital gains, you have a business deduction here. It is, and that covers 97% of the businesses in the nation. Real quick, Small before, I let, before I let you go, Congressman, sure. I love talking to you, I really do. Sure. But real quick, you know, right, it sounds to me, sounds to me, Congressman, like you really are kind of holding true to your position. Do you think that that's true of most of the party, most of the Democrats in the House right now? They're going to hold true to their to their to their guns with, the, with regards to the 250. So we're not going to really see any compromise this week. No, no. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. There's, there are different places for compromise here. The length of time. Uh, do we move the number, uh, the threshold up or down? All of those things will undoubtedly be in play. I happen to believe that what we're voting on this afternoon is a very good package of bills that will stimulate the economy that covers nearly every American. And in fact, every taxpayer will get a tax break here, whether you're a billionaire or you're a, a wage earner earning $30,000 a year. Every every taxpayer will get a tax break. So, you know, where, where are we going to go? I like what we're doing. Is there room for compromise? Hey, that's the nature of our democracy. If you don't compromise, you get a civil war. So we don't want that. <laughs> Congressman John Garamendi, Democrat from Thank California. You. I always enjoy our discussions, Congressman Garamendi, and I'll see you very soon, hopefully. Please stop Anytime. by the studio in New York. <laughs> I will do so. All right. Well, it is the city.